Welcome to Tracker. I'm Garrett Kaliga, and here we have the latest news, tips, and tech in the bounty hunting world. Today's show is sponsored by Lightning Bolt Company, makers of both the Uberev pistol and the amazing Atsakov sniper rifle, which fire charged electron shots that can spread to nearby conductive targets. Founded by former security experts with years of infield experience, Lightning Bolt weapons were designed to withstand the heat of battle and look dang good doing it too. If I might say so myself. Love the way the barrel crackles with electricity while charging a shot. There's nothing else quite like it out there. Visit an authorized Lightning Bolt merchant to see for yourself. Okay, let's get the show going. Today's guest is someone I've tried to convince to come on the show for years. I begged, I pleaded. I paid for several expensive dinners, but she always turned me down. That is, until now. Dear viewers, when she reached out to the most illustrious and important landmark in a bounty hunter's career, retirement, Nala Gove came to the studio. Thanks for finally coming to the show. To be clear, I'm only here because Garrett's holding me at gunpoint. Ah, she's got jokes tonight. But Nala, seriously, do you think the viewers think I could get a drop on you? In all seriousness, it's nice to be here. Thank you so much for coming on. It means a lot to the viewers out there to hear from somebody from the field. I am sorry that it took me so long to come to the show. I just, I'm not one for attention. Which is one of the many reasons why you were such a good bounty hunter. Well, that and a whole lot of luck. You don't survive as long as I did without dodging a few bullets. No need to be modest, Nala. Part of the reason I wanted you to come on the show is to celebrate your incredible career. <laughs> no, I'm serious. This one time, I sneezed right as somebody shot at my head. Moved just enough that the bullet ricocheted off my helmet instead of being a direct hit. Now, why haven't I heard this story before? When was this? Long, long time ago. Way before we met. That had to be a surreal experience. Oh yeah. Taught me a lot about situational awareness and how to best approach targets on foot. It also convinced me to spend some serious creds on armor. I was wearing this light helmet at the time that I'd picked up secondhand, and after seeing the damage a glancing shot did, I immediately went out and invested in some good gear. Now, now the fact that you ever went back out bounty hunting again is a miracle. There was no regen tech back then to bring you back. Hey, we all have to earn our dinner somehow. I gotta know. You ever end up catching the target? It took a few extra days, but I got her. <laughs> we actually became friends after she did her stint. She used to thank me for getting her locked up, because most of the gang she was running with got ghosted while she was away. She said it made it easier to walk away from that life once she got out. <sighs> Sounds like she was lucky you sneezed, too. A lot of younger bounty hunters hate it when I tell them that my biggest piece of advice is that it's just better to be lucky than good. Which, look, I get it. Yeah, when we first worked together, I was prodding you for advice. Be lucky wasn't exactly what I wanted to hear. I mean, I can't take and make myself lucky, but I can develop my skill set. I guess that's part of the reason why I like giving that advice. It's really just trying to tell you that there's a lot to this job that you won't be able to control. So you don't need to try so damn hard to control everything. So much of bounty hunting is about how to react and adjust to things that you could never have predicted. Great point. And we're going to dig into this further. But first, let's take a moment to properly introduce your legacy. Because I'm guessing not everyone listening is familiar with you or your reputation. Partially because, as you said, you don't like the attention when you work. Attention only makes the job harder, in my opinion. The less that people notice me, or think about me, the better. Now, when I was coming up, everybody knew that if you needed to find somebody in Pyro, you calmed Nala. But not many bounty hunters worked the system regularly. And out of the ones that did, she always knew the lay of the land better than anyone. Stuff like what gangs control what areas, and which ones were warring with each other, was all part of the tapestry of Pyro. And Nala was the navigator. You don't have a choice. Knowing that stuff was the only way to work the system safely. Speaking of, do you remember our first discussion? Because I sure do. Was that 
the one where I asked if you wanted to die? Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> I was so nervous. You were being so incredibly kind and patient with me until I started to explain my plan and Bob going to Ruin Station. Which, at the time, was locked down because the headhunters were trying to regain control of it from... Ah, damn it, what was their name? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, they're not around anymore. Oh man, the low side tomahawks. That's them. <laughs> that was a weird crew. Thankfully, you talked me out of that suicidal idea and gave me some good advice about how to potentially track down my target, which I eventually did thanks to you. After that lesson, any time I got word that a bounty by tracking had fled to Pyro, I first my heart sank because I knew things were going to get a lot more dangerous. But after that, I'd send you a comm. What in the world made you focus on hunting down outlaws in a system controlled by outlaws? Well, not many people know this, but that's where I was born and raised. So I was comfortable moving around the system, avoiding the solar flares. And I already had a good number of hiding spots picked out for when I needed to lay low. Also, still had friends I trusted who kept me updated on developments in certain areas. Starting to see the bigger picture here. So you were uniquely positioned. I know a lot of bounty hunters who drop a target the second they went into pyro. Don't blame them at all. It's not an easy system to work, even if you are familiar with it. You remember the last gig you worked in pyro? I do, but I'd rather not get into specifics. All I can say is that the system has changed drastically over the last few years. All right, I respect that. But in your opinion, what has changed that you can talk about? Obviously, Xenothread has become a dominant force there. They're certainly a factor. Violent gains have been around Pyro for ages. But using the system to organize attacks on Staten is a new wrinkle. Most Pyro gangs avoid inter-system operations. That'll attract UEE attention. They'll do them, but much more discreetly than Xenos. That way, they'll be left alone to control their own little area of influence as they see fit. Yep. It's why Pyro can be such a difficult system for outsiders to work. Gang allegiances and area influences are always shifting there. It's survival of the fittest. Though, actually, more like survival of the fiercest right now. So, I know officially you're retired. But there are a lot of bounty hunters out there who'd love to hear your thoughts on some of the most prominent gangs currently in Pyro. They're all bad and should be avoided if possible. That cover it? Sound advice. But let's go gang by gang really quick. Like what you used to do with me when I'd ask for an update. Let's start with Xenothread. Dangerous and ultra-violent bastards who are primarily fueled by hate and anti-corporate rhetoric. Good summary. The only thing I'd add is that, from what I'm hearing, a lot of them are ex-UEE military. Could be. Don't think most of them were originally from Pyro. A lot of other gangs aren't happy about all the attention they're generating by attacking targets in the UEE. Mm -hmm. Next, you mentioned the headhunters earlier. They've been around forever. Way longer than I've been a bounty hunter. No matter what happens in system, they seem to survive. So they're extremely dangerous, but you can deal with them. They're smart enough to not always resort to violence. Fair enough. And changing directions a little bit, what's your take on the fire rats? They're a weird one. On a lot of levels, they act more like a cult than a gang. But I don't know any other cults that can boost the ship as fast as them. They all tend to be true believers in whatever it is that they believe. Guess you gotta be a true believer. If you're willing to take severe burns just to join. Exactly. Okay, we have to go to commercial break in a moment for whatever shenanigans Galactic Gears could be pushing in the next section. But... We've got time for one more. What's going on with the overlords? Who knows? There are a lot of rumors floating around about them, but no one knows who they are or what they want. What we do know is that they primarily target other gangs and their operations. Some folks in Pyro think they're actually vigilantes, but I'm not convinced that they're fighting for any kind of greater good. It's just as likely that they're trying to clear out the other gangs so they can take over. Hmm. Or set the stage for someone else to move in. Mm, possibly. Okay, okay, we really gotta take that break. When we return, we'll have more 
with the recently retired Nala Govey. She'll give us her top tips and tricks when working pyro. And maybe, just maybe, I can coax her into telling us how she tracked down Wednesday Kyles. You sure do love that story. Thank you for sticking around on this one. Had a lot of fun. Very experimental. I wanted to thank Awesome Ash for coming out on this one. Link below in the description and in the pinned message in the comments uh, to her channel. In particular, the Division series, which there's been a few episodes of so far. Uh, really fun thing. Right now the show's on hiatus. We'll see where it goes in the future. Uh, but please give that some wonderful views. Uh, her creativity and her leadership in that show has been fantastic. I'm one of the people who helped do some of the voice acting in it and really just in general enjoyed the heck out of making those episodes. So please give it a watch. It definitely is worth it. And give her a subscription too if you possibly could. Okay, uh, so this one was a really fun one. Do pay attention to these other characters like the Fire Rats, the Overlords, and the Headhunters. Uh, you know, Nala is kind of like a transport vehicle into these lesser known organizations i'll be nice and use that word <laughs> some may just call them dedicated evil pirates <laughs> uh but uh these orcs that basically try to run the areas within pyro in particular duel over who owns ruin station currently as was mentioned in this episode the big force to power to deal with is the wonderful or evil uh, xeno threat uh, depending on if you're for or against the law. As a reminder, in the world that we're in, in Stanton, uh, that, that's currently in-game, uh, you can join the fight against Xenothreat or join alongside them to profiteer off of fighting other players and uh, fight off the evil Xenothreat. Um, and this is uh, something else I'll include in the end cards. Uh, one of my other articles that I read about the CDF and some concerns about why is the CDF required when we have four megacorps that all call Stanton one of their major headquarters. And um, so, for example, Crusader Industries, why can't they build enough large ships and, and, and enough military vessels for CruSec to be able to fend off uh, organizations like Xenothreat? And uh, the UE Navy is also called into question in some of the, in some of the more recent lore. And the UE navies, to a lesser extent, I'm going to state the obvious here, they're spread thin. Uh, even depending on who you ask, there's a debate on how much money a UE, UEC should be spent on the Navy and uh, how much of the Navy should be used against anything but van dual threats. Uh, the CDF is basically an organization uh, like a, of player militia, basically. I'll, that's kind of the term I, I would use. Uh, where it's NPCs and players that band together and attempt to fight off the enemy all alongside the advocacy, which is the, uh, the, the police uh, of, of UEE space. And um, they are by themselves not equipped well enough to fend off the Idris and other types of ships and the support fleets that Xenothreat can bring. Um, in lore... It's because, once again, resources spread thin, no one's willing to commit enough. Suddenly, they need an upswell of these forces. In gameplay terms, it's so the players have something to do on both sides. But yes, I think a lot of these things that are interesting as little lore notes have tie-ins with gameplay. So with the Fire Rats, understanding that they have an immense devotion, almost a cult-like mentality, as Nala puts it, uh, to the solar flares it is an important thing for you to know. The fact that the uh, Xenothreat is possibly ex-UEE military, as pointed out by the showrunner in this lore right here, uh, Garrett, is something that would be very useful to, to be mindful of and something to look for. I think it really adds a lot of dimension to the world you're fighting. You're not just fighting another nameless, faceless NPC. You're fighting something that truly is for or against something you believe in. And that brings the, the, that tie-in, that emotional tie-in to things. They're not just the big purple space monster. <laughs> these, are, these, are, uh, these are people with, with motivations and thoughts 
and and you you want to fight against them even more because they are against what you believe in and that's a pretty good reason to want to fight so yeah i hope you got something out of this please put some uh commentary below or reach out to me on discord red j hashtag zero 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 one um believe it or not yes i do answer every one of my combos dms um i know some people they really enjoy talking one-on-one they prefer not to talk in public that's fine if you want to fly together i'm on the ptu right now mostly if you're wondering where i've been uh when, when it is open i just took part in the ptu tonight no all my footage was ruined <laughs> uh the little bit i could get and uh, i had to copy my count to the ptu twice and uh for whatever reason my game kept trying to patch and i had to do the copy paste trick i'll include in the end video as well a guide on how to do the ptu if i still have that video up i should it should still be valid i'll double check it before i put it up just so i'm not giving you bad info but if, if you've already been through the PTU process, it, I'm literally just going to have in that video, like how to copy your account to the PTU, how to, you know, copy your, uh, your files over so you don't have to make an 80 gig download. Uh, instead, you just do a couple gig download, you know, 10 gigs or whatever it is for 3.17.4. But yes, uh, the IAE area is really interesting. Um, no, I'm not going to comment on the size of the Drake cutter. It looks like it's a big space, but that's deceived us in the past with IAEs, so I'll wait and see. The thought that it might be a medium salvage vessel, uh, that's got a lot of interesting things, but I'm still hearing the data runner and the cargo moving uh, in that medium space that Drake's really not in yet. I, I, I kind of feel that way too, so let's see. Let's see what they're up to up there very soon hopefully and uh we'll have a lot of ad excitement building up in the IAE. i also like the fact that the c8r the c8r is coming out uh so you got a pisces that's basically a little ambulance which would work really well with a nice little carrick which has you know a good med bed um kind of brings up an interesting gameplay style because remember regeneration costs more medical resources and also regeneration because you consume them the vessel only has so much storage space and that costs money to buy medical supplies and the higher tier treatments incur more medical supply consumption in the future and then also something else to keep in mind is that regeneration will cause scars on the on the body of the player over time you're going to get beat up more and more and more and if we continue with the original concept the death of a spaceman your next of kin character, which you still own, so you won't lose your LTI or tenure or anything, would then inherit your ship. So you have to redesign a whole new character. That doesn't sound very fun to do that often. So it's going to become more and more important to salvage the character, so to speak. Also, just I'm going to state the obvious, but all your gear on that body is going to be nice to bring back. Um, hopefully less and less we'll need to worry about game glitches needing the backspace, and less and less we will have the desire to want to just uh, regenerate constantly don't get me wrong it's nice to have it in your back pocket but unless you're you know uh, uh, just just messing around it in, in a place like jump town um, it's going to become more and more valuable to uh, experience how the game is really meant to be played where it, you you want to patch yourself back up and get back and i see the c8r is a great little ship especially for people that are uh, maybe not have a character laying around <laughs> like many um having that ship to be able to go to medical beacons and rescue people yes that has its risks but uh you can just fly away if somebody starts shooting at you uh, hopefully and uh you might make a ton of uec in the process from what i'm hearing there's a lot of people who've had good luck doing that i've had mixed luck answering medical beacons i think i've only done five my whole time i played i'll be honest with you i actually carry around a paramed gun all the time but usually i'm playing with other players or people i've run into i'll try to heal them or whatever um and sometimes you might have some surprises where you run into somebody and they uh you, you really thought they were an npc it's really good to have that paramed gun and to hope they don't shoot back afterwards <laughs> most of the time they thank you and you make a new friend uh it's it's always a risk when you're playing with other players though so yeah that's all i got here uh, i wish you all a wonderful night thanks again for sticking around if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to my long-time subscribers thank you so much you're why i keep making these and finally thank you again to awesome ash for coming out for tonight's uh, video this was a fantastic production i really hope to do more of these in the future and be sure to check out her channel please if there's nothing else you remember check out her channel
It's right here in the cards. Take care. Fly safe.